The next section of notes are on the northern colonies, also known as the New England colonies. Those colonies include Massachusetts, which became made out of Plymouth and the Massachusetts Bay Colony, number two, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. And you're familiar with all of these names because they are states that border our state today. Now notice on the map you have the English colonies are all of the 13 colonies on the east coast and then north and west are French colonies, the colony of New France. Now the first colony we're going to discuss is the Massachusetts Bay Colony. It was a colony in New England and it was created for religious freedom just like Plymouth and a couple other colonies we're going to look at. Massachusetts Bay was created for religious freedom. Massachusetts was created in 1630 by Puritans from England who came to the New World for religious freedom. And by their name, Puritan sounds like pure. What, they, what the Puritans wanted to do was purify the Church of England. They were persecuted in, in England because they did not follow the rules of the Church of England. And the Church of England was the second most powerful force in England after the king and the government, the monarchy. So the government persecuted anyone who didn't follow the rules of the Church of England. Groups like the Puritans, Pilgrims, Roman Catholics, Quakers, and others were put in jail. They were tortured. They were taxed. They had their property taken. They were exiled, which means kicked out of England. And they were even killed for not following the rules of the Church of England. So the Puritans, led by John Winthrop, came to the Massachusetts Bay Area in 1631. Um, well, actually, before that. Uh, so by the end of 1631, there were over a thousand Puritans living in the colony. That's a lot of people. And the Massachusetts Bay Area is near Plymouth. It's all around the arm of Massachusetts. When you look at Massachusetts, it looks like an arm flexing its muscle. And the Massachusetts Bay Colony was all over that area. The colony became successful by creating trade relationships with local Indian tribes by fishing, by whaling, and by creating industries to produce needed goods. They were very good ship builders, and they had the resources to build ships for England. By 1640, more than 20,000 colonists lived in the colony. And um, Massachusetts Bay was larger and wealthier than the Plymouth, Plymouth Colony. And about um, 70, 60 or 70 years after it began, by 1691, the English government joined the Massachusetts Bay Colony and the Plymouth Colony to create Massachusetts Colony. The Puritans' religious belief really dominated the colony. It was a colony ruled by the religious government rather than a secular or non-religious government. Non-Puritans had to pay higher taxes. Non-Puritans couldn't even practice their own religion and non-Puritans were not allowed to be a part of the government. So it's interesting because the Puritans left a religiously intolerant place, which was England, and they created their own religiously intolerant colony in Massachusetts Bay. Now many Puritans, they didn't like the way that the colony was being run, and they decided to leave to create their own colonies. Some of them didn't like the colony because it was too relax, too, li too lax. Others didn't like the colony because it wasn't strict enough. So, of course, you know, people are never really happy. So they can find something to complain about wherever they go. Um, so Massachusetts Bay Colony was not perfect like the Puritans had hoped for. And so those people that were really fed up, they left and started their own colonies. For instance, in 1636, Roger Williams left the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and he created the Rhode Island Company, Colony, rather. The colony was created to give people absolute religious freedom, and today it's really neat to go there and see how, how that has worked out through the, through the time. Um, during Roger Williams' time, there was a square in the, in the capital where there was a, um, a Jewish synagogue on one corner, a Presbyterian church on the other corner, and then a Puritan church on another corner. So these religions all worked together. I mean, we're all existed together. They were allowed to be in Rhode Island. 
where that would never happen in the Puritan colony of Massachusetts Bay. Um, Anne Hutchinson, she followed Williams and created the second, a, second, a second settlement in the Rhode Island colony. Um, and she was, a, what's interesting is she's a woman, and she got kicked out of the, the Massachusetts Bay Colony for being outspoken. And in that time, women did not usually go out of their way. Well, they didn't go out and speak publicly against anything. They did not have much of a voice. So um, she rattled everybody's chain and she got kicked out of the colony. And then after she started the, her second Rhode Island settlement, she was killed by Native Americans. In 1636, Thomas Hooker, he left Massachusetts, and he created the Connecticut colony. And the really great thing that came out of Connecticut that you need to be aware of is the fundamental orders of Connecticut. It is a written-down agreement on how to run the government in Connecticut. And it's an example of a representative government. So now you have three representative governments in the colonies that you've learned about. First of all, the House of Burgesses in Virginia, or Jamestown. Then you have the um, Mayflower Compact in Plymouth. And now the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut in Connecticut. In Connecticut, all adult men could vote. And that was big because you didn't have to own land even to vote. In 1679, the colony of New Hampshire was created by joining small settlements together that were north of Massachusetts. So as people left different centralized colonies and they started their own little areas and owned thousands and thousands of acres, um, those settlements were eventually all pulled together and made into New Hampshire. Now, what's typical for a New England colony is what we're going to learn right here. Uh, typically, agricultural life was difficult due to rocky soil, a short growing season, and harsh winters. Those are the three major reasons why agricultural life was so difficult. And we're going to ask you that over and over again. You're going to see it on your, qu your quizzes, your quest, your unit test, and most likely even on your final exam this year. You need to understand that in New England, farms were small. They were just little small family farms, and they mainly grew corn. In New England and that's because the weather was so harsh the soil was so rocky the winters were cold the growing season was short many New Englanders made their living by fishing whaling merchant sailing and manufacturing and so most of the people in New England lived on the coast not so much inland if they were inland they had very small um, they had little small farms that they survive from and if they were on the coast they were into uh, shipbuilding etc fishing um, and again at the bottom there it says most colonists made a living by farming they made their living and they survived by farming 